Hello to all. Welcome again. Today we are going to study the male reproductive world, and we know very well that the male reproductive world in a flower is called as the androecium. Okay, and the male reproductive organ. You can also call it as that androecium is called as the male reproductive organ, and the unit of the androecium is the stamen that you already you have studied in. the morphology section in class 11th okay so the male reproductive organ of the flower is the androecium and its unit is the stamen its unit is the stamen and biologically technically the stamen is also called as microsporophyll i have drawn a diagram here and this diagram is indicating a microsporophyll or a stamen fine now a typical stamen a typical stamen is differentiated mainly into two parts one is the filament and another is known as the anther there is another part also present known as the connective right we will discuss the connective also okay so this is a typical stamen and you can see that two major parts are drawn here one is the stalk of the stamen which is also called as the filament and the another portion the most important section of the stamen which is called as the anther fine and i have drawn the diagram of a bilobed anther i have drawn a diagram of bilobed anther and that's why i have made two lobes of the anther okay because the most common type of the anther is bilobed it's not necessary that uh, always the anther will be bilobed only sometimes it may be single lobed also but there is uh, that is an exception fine now a typical stamen is having the two main parts first of all the filament and the second one is known as the anther filament is also called as stalk of the stamen it is long it is thin and it joins stamen to the thalamus it joins stamen to the thalamus means this part this part of the filament is connected with the thalamus okay and this part of the filament is connected with the anther just now i am talking about this part means the filament or we can say it as that with the help of this filament the stamen is connected with the thalamus part of the flower okay and now the second one the most important part of the stamen is the anther at the free end of the filament this is the free end of the filament why free end of the filament because this part of the filament is connected with the thalamus but this part right so at the free end of the filament a swollen a swollen microspore bearing structure is present and that swollen microspore bearing structure is called as the anther okay don't be confused with the name microspore microspore means what microspore means pollen grains okay and we know very well that in anther pollen sacs are present and in pollen sacs what are filled microspores or the pollen grains are filled we can also say that anther bear microsporangium also called as pollen sac okay and in microsporangium microspores are present so either i can say that the anther consist of microsporangium and microsporangium consist of the microspores okay or i can say that the anther consist of pollen sac and the pollen sac consist of the pollen grain okay now i am just now talking about a connective you can see in the diagram i have drawn a connective also now what is a connective a sterile tissue is present between the two lobes of the anther between the two lobes between the two lobes of the anther a sterile tissue is present which is also called as the connective it is an extension of the filament basically 
the connective is just the extension of the filament which contains conducting strands which is containing the conducting strands don't be confused by the conducting strands in simple way i can say that the connective is a steroidal tissue present between the two lobes of the anther it is the extension of the filament and it consists of vascular tissues conducting strand means vascular tissues okay now let's have uh, a structure uh, definition of this particular thing now first of all bilobed anther i was talking just now about a bilobed anther okay because the most common type of the anther is most common type of the anther is the bilobed anther now what is bilobed anther as the name is indicating by means two means each anther has two lobes here is the diagram which is indicating a bilobed anther which is having two lobes and you can also see here that i have drawn a transfer section of a bilobed anther i have also drawn a transfer section of a bilobed anther you can see the two lobes this is one lobe this is another lobe and in between the two lobes a steroidal tissue is present known as the connective fine and each lobe this is one lobe this is another lobe each lobe is consisting of two microsporangia each lobe consists of two microsporangia or i can say two pollen sacs and each microsporangium is bearing microspore or i can say that each each pollen sac is bearing many pollen grains okay so the most common type of the anther is the bilobed anther here each anther is having two lobes now each lobe is having two theca each lobe this is one lobe this is one lobe okay this is one lobe this is another lobe each lobe is having two theca and that's why the anther is also called as dithecus anther theca means a group of cell okay theca means here a group of cell or i can say that uh, uh, theca means the compartment so i can say here that each lobe is having two theca means each lobe is having two compartments two compartments here means each lobe is having two microsporangia don't be confused at all you can say cluster of cells you can say it as two compartments you can say it as two microsporangia okay and each theca each theca means each microsporangia each theca this is one theca 1 2 3 and 4 okay so this is one lobe and in one lobe two thecas are present this is another lobe two thecas are present like this how many thecas are there four thecas are there so each theca has a mass of sporogenous tissue means here here what is filled a mass of sporogenous tissue is found okay which develops into microsporangia which later develops into this mass of sporogenous tissue which is present in the theca it develops into microsporangia microsporangia means what the pollen sac so i can say that typical bilobed anther has how many microsporangia four microsporangia or four pollen sacs 1 2 3 and 4 so a typical bilobed anther has four microsporangia which develops into which later develops into pollen sac that's why i have said that you can use the term a uh, pollen sac okay for the microsporangia because the four microsporangia later develops into pollen sac and uh, such a anther will be called as what the tetrasporangiate tetraspor tetra means four and sporangiate means microsporangia so when there are four microsporangia the condition is called as tetrasporangiate condition okay and pollen grains are formed inside the pollen sac through meiotic division of pollen mother cell means i want to say that this is pollen sac this is pollen sac okay now pollen sac consist of sporogenous tissue uh, that sporogenous tissue the cells of the sporogenous tissue develops into develops into microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell is diploid when it undergoes meiosis it will form the haploid pollen grain 
So I, I want to say that pollen grains are formed inside this pollen set. Inside this pollen set, what are formed? Pollen grains are formed. And how pollen grains are formed? So in the pollen sac, pollen mother cells are formed. Pollen mother cells are deployed. When they divide by meiosis, they will form haploid pollen grains. Fine. Now, I have quoted an example here of a bilobed anther. See, bilobed anther is very common type of anther. So, I have quoted an example of a typical angiosperm and that is the capsula which belongs to the crucifery family or I can say it as brassicaceae family. Here in capsula which is a typical angiosperm, anthers are dithicus and tetraspongid. Anthers are dithicus and tetraspongid. In nutshell, I can say majority of the angiosperms have a dithicus and tetraspongid condition. Now, a uniloped anther is also there. A uniloped anther is also there. Now, uniloped anther is like this type. Uniloped anther is like this type I am drawing here. It is kidney shaped. It is kidney shaped. Kidney shaped. You can also call it as a reniform anther. A reniform anther means kidney shaped anther. So, uniloped anther, it is a rare condition. And it is found in the Malvesi family. It is found in which family? Malvesi family. You know, na? Malvesi family is the cotton family. And anther having a single lobe. Anther having a single lobe is called as the unilobe anther. And this type of the anther is called as monothicus. This type of anther is called as monothicus. Earlier we have discussed dithicus anther. It is what? Monothicus anther. Right? And it consists of only two microspongia. Because why? In the dithicus anther, we have seen that there were two lobes and each lobe was having two thicker. Now here there is already only one lobe. So one lobe will be having, one lobe is there and there are only two pollen sacs here. So this type of the anther is called as monothicus anther. This type of anther is called as monothicus anther and it consists of only two microspongia. Means a dithicus anther consists of four microspongia while a monothicus anther consists of only two microspongia and that's why such type of the anther is called as bisporangia bisporangia so i can say in short that in malvesi family the anther is the anther is monothicus and bisporangia monothicus and bisporangia right and the last one is that uh, there is one exception that sometime the sometime there is a condition monosporangia just now i have discussed about the tetrasporangiate condition i have discussed about the bisporangiate condition then is another condition known as the monosporangiate condition monosporangiate condition means what in archeuthobium in archeuthobium there is only one microsporangium per anther there is only one microsporangium per anther and when there is one microsporangium per anther the condition is called as monosporangiate condition but this monosporangiate condition is very much rare and only found in the archeuthopium. Okay. So by this video, we have discussed today the male reproductive world of the flower known as the androsium in which we have discussed the stamen and we have studied the two important parts, the filament and the anther of the stamen. Okay. In the next video, we'll be uh, talking about the structure of the anther okay and we will be discussing the wall layer surrounding the anther so thanks a lot for watching me